In this video, we'll be trying to solve three more questions on the ideal gas law or the ideal gas equation from our previous class, okay? Now, in our previous class, we talked about the concept of the ideal gas law, what it entails, as well as derive the formula for the ideal gas law. So if you missed that class, I'll leave a link to that class in the video description. But for this video here, we'll be trying to solve three questions on the ideal gas law. Let's get into it. The first question here is this. A given mass of nitrogen is 0.12 dm cube. So you have this at 60 degrees Celsius and 1.01 times 10 to the power 3 Pascal. Find its pressure at the same temperature if its volume is changed to 0.24 dm cube. All right, so how do we solve this? Solution. All right, let's get this done. So solution. Let's list out given parameters as always, all right? What are we given in this question? All right, so what I'm given here, the first thing we can see here is this 0.12 dm cube, which represents volume, okay? But then going to this question, you can see we have another volume here, 0.24 dm cube. So in essence, we have two volume. So I'll call 0.12 dm cube my initial volume. So given about one, initial volume, that's V1, is equal to 0.12 dm cube. That's my initial volume. From here, we've gotten the initial volume as 0.12 dm cube. They said at 60 degrees Celsius. So this is the temperature at this volume. And if this is V1, this temperature becomes what there? T1. That's the initial temperature at the initial volume. So T1 over 2. I'm giving T1, initial temperature T1, as being equal to, I have 60 degrees Celsius. That becomes 60 degrees Celsius. Of course, I have to convert to Kelvin. Okay. And in converting to Kelvin, we simply add 273. Okay. So it becomes this plus 273. And if I add this up here, um, just get my calculator and punch this. This becomes 60 plus 273. And that's 333 Kelvin. I'm having this as 3. 3, 3 Kelvin. This is the value of T1. 3, 3, 3 Kelvin. Okay. What's the next thing that they said? And 1.01 times 10 to the power 3 Pascal. So I, 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 the third in there. I, 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 I'm giving the, the pressure. Okay. Pascal is actually a unit for measuring pressure. And I have this as 1.01 times 10 to the power 3 Pascal. So I have this. Okay, what next? That is said, find its pressure. So we are given a pressure already in Pascal. We are asked to find its pressure again. In essence, we are asked to find a second pressure. So IV P2, that's a new pressure. It's equal to unknown. Okay, they said at the same temperature. That means my T2, that's V there. T2, the same temperature. That means the second temperature is equal to the same value as the T1, and that means T2 is equal to, my T1 is 333, so it becomes 333 Kelvin, because T2 is equal to T1. Now they said, if its volume is changed to 0 0.24, okay, one last thing there, VI, the new volume is changed to 0 0.24 dm cube. All right. So we are asked to find the second pressure. So we have this now. For this, how do we solve this question here? Uh, if you look at this, the only thing that is important for you to convert is just temperature to Kelvin. All right. Now, if you, if you recall from my last class, which I said, I will link in description. We said pressure should be in atmosphere. Okay. Temperature should be in Kelvin and um, volume should be in DMQ. So we can see that we've converted temperature to Kelvin. Volume is given in dm cube, but pressure now is now in Pascal, PA. Pascal is the same thing as Newton per meter squared. So it's given in Pascal or Newton per meter squared and not atmosphere. Please note that in questions like this, it's okay for you to solve with atmosphere, with the Pascal there. Just that your answer will also be in Pascal. But please, it's very important to convert the temperature to Kelvin, please. All right. So with that being said, I'll recall my formula from the ideal gas equation. When we combine Boyce's law and Charles' law, we had that P1 V1 all over T1 is equal to P2 V2 all over T2. We had this. 
Let's impute values. P1 is 1.01 times 10 to the power 3. Or better still, since we want to get uh, the value of uh, P2, let's just make P2 to be subject of the formula. All right. So how do we do this? Very simple. We'll cross multiply this and this, and then this and this. If we cross multiply, we'll have that P2 V2 times T1 is equal to uh, this times this. That becomes P1 V1 times T2. All right. I only cross multiplied. To get the value, the value of P2, I'll divide here and also divide here by everything attached to P2, which is V2, T1, also V2, T1. This cancels this. We can say P2 is equal to P1. P1 is 101 times 10 to the power 3. So P1 gives you 1.01 times 10 to the power 3. That's P1. Okay. Next up, V1. Okay, V1 is 0 0.12. So V1 there is 0 0.12. And then we now have T2. If you look at this, T2, we said it's 333, as you can see here. So V2 is 333. So let me just take V2, T2 as 333. That becomes 333. That's T2 all divided by, so this is all over V2. What's V2? V2 is 0 0.24. So V2 now is 0.24, that's V2, and then T1. T1, if you check, we had a value as 333 Kelvin, okay? All right, so with this, let's get the value of P2. So we have that P2 is actually equal to, so I'll just go straight to punching this. My numerator is 1.01 times 10. To power 3, uh, excuse me, 3. All right, multiplied by 0 0.12, multiplied by, okay, um, it's also mathematically correct for you to do this times this, since they are the same thing. Okay, so that also works. So all over 0 0.24, so it makes my calculation faster. So I'll simply punch 1.01 times 10 to power 3, multiplied by 0 0.12. You take down your answer, then divide that your answer by 0. 0.24, you have your answer as 505 as your answer. Okay, that will be your answer. And don't forget that I said this will retain the same SI unit as the P1. The P1 here, the SI unit is in Pascal, so this will retain the same SI unit as Pascal. All right, so the value of the pressure there is 505 Pascal. That's how we solve this question. Okay. All right, so having said this, let's proceed to question two. So I said in this video, we'll do three questions. Let's look at question two. If you missed our first class, I'll link our first class in the video description. Let's go to question two. Question two here says, one mole of an ideal gas at STP, that standard temperature and pressure, occupies how many liters? All right, so you have this. Um, if you checked our previous class, when we talked about, when we tried to de derive the value of R, the molar gas constant, okay, we derived R as being equal to 0 0.082, right, in value, and we use certain values, and we said it's at STP, and we said at STP that the pressure P is equal to one atmosphere, at STP the temperature T is equal to 273 Kelvin, and then at STP, the volume V is equal to 22.4 dm cube. All right, and now you're being asked to, you're, you've been asked one mole of an ideal gas at STP occupies how many liters? What does liters exactly represent? Note that liters is still the unit for what there? Volume, all right? So volume is still liters. And note that one liter, that's one liter, let me use L, is equal to 1 dm cube. So liter and dm cube are literally the same thing. So they are literally asking you in this question, they are saying one mole of an ideal gas at STP will occupy how many dm cube? Okay, that's the same thing. How many dm cube was the value of the volume? And if you look at this, we said the value is actually 22.4 dm cube. And since dm cube means the same thing as liter, becomes 22.4 liters. So if I come back to my option, my option here, the correct option is option C, 22.4 liters. That's the correct answer 
to this question. We'll take a final question and then we'll take a final question and then we are done with this particular video. Let's look at question three. A final question there, question three, it says a 3.5 liter container holds 0.56 moles of hydrogen gas at 412 Kelvin. What is the pressure inside the container? How do we solve this um, solution? So solution. As usual, first task, let's list our parameters and see what we have been given and, what we, and then compare it with what we have to get. A 3.5 liter container. So the first I'm giving there, number one, is the volume. I'm giving the volume. The volume V is equal to um, 3.5 liter. 3.5 liter. And we said liter is the same thing as DMQ. So it becomes 3.5 DMQ. The same thing. Okay. We said holds 0.56 moles. So number two, we'll give the number of moles. Um, moles, number of moles, okay, um, number of moles, that's N, it's equal to 0 0.56, 0 0.56 moles. All right, so we have this, okay. You said of hydrogen gas at, at 412 Kelvin, number three, we have the temperature. So when you hear Kelvin, you know it's um, temperature. The temperature T is equal to 412 Kelvin. Okay. Next up, they said, what is the pressure inside the container? The four, the pressure. P is equal to unknown. So how do we find, how do you solve this question here? If you look at this, the equation that suits the, this question here would be the I do gas equation in the form PV is equal to NRT. Okay. Now, if you look at this, the temperature is in Kelvin, so it's its correct units. Number of moles is in MOL, that's the correct unit. Also, volume is in DMQ, also the correct unit. So that means we are settled for this. Let's now solve this. And don't forget that R is a constant, all right? You may be given or you may not be given. And the value of R is 0 0.082, as we've used in our previous class. That's irrespective of the units. So we'll have that PV. So P into V. V, as we said, is 3.5. So P times V, 3.5. It's equal to N. The value of N, as we can see here, is 0 0.56 moles. So we're giving N as 0 0.56 into r although we are not given r we know that r is a constant the molar gas constant 0 0.082 and finally t for temperature the temperature is 412 kelvin i'm having 412 kelvin so we have this all right let's now get this done um if it's if you work on this this becomes p times 3.5 is simply 3.5 p is equal to let's multiply all of these values if you multiply this, we have 0 0.56 times 0 0.082 times 412. Multiplying all of this, I have 18.92 as my value approximately. Now we we'll have to divide here, divide here, and divide here by 3.5. Divide here by 3.5. This cancels this, so we have that P is equal to... We have 18.92 divided by 3.5. If I do that, my value is actually 5.41 approximately. Okay. The value of the S I need for the pressure will be the first thing as will be the same thing as um okay for this the the um S signed for pressure here would be atmosphere. Okay, the atmosphere comes from the concept that arrow arrow is equal to 0 0.08 and for this the unit is simply this in atmosphere that's atm dm cube per kelvin per mole we discussed this in our last class so that's how we get the pressure as being the si unit of pressure as being in atmosphere so we have this so basically this is how we solve this question okay 
All right, guys, so this is how you solve this question. Now, I want to give you a task. Okay, let's edit this. We did this. We'll change this from 3.5 to 2.5. We have this as 2.5 liters. We'll change this from 0 0.56 to 1 point, uh, let's say, 3.6, okay? Then we'll change it. We'll leave the temperature the same thing. Okay, let's just leave it as 4.12 Kelvin. Now, you have this question here. It says a 2.5 liter container holds 1.36 moles of hydrogen gas at 4.12 Kelvin. What is the pressure inside the container? All right, so look at the same question. Now, you solve this for yourself, okay? Pause this video, solve this question, and leave your answer in the comment section, and I'll tell you if you're correct or not, okay? All right, so pause this, solve this question, and leave your answer in the comment section, okay? All right, guys, don't forget that I've prepared over 100 classes for you on physics, chemistry, mathematics, and other science subjects, okay? All right, if to get access to these over 100 classes, simply visit my website, www.jonahimano.com forward slash courses, and then you see the jam slash YA courses, okay? It gives you a lifetime access to these courses, as well as past question, um, as well as past question solution to each of the topics, okay? Or you can join my channel membership to get exclusive access to Jam and YEC content, okay? I'll leave a link in the video description, all right? All right, guys. So if you enjoyed this video as usual, please hit the like button, all right? So always like this video, okay? Give it a thumbs up, like this video, leave a comment, all right? I give you a task, I give you a work on assignments, all right? Solve it and leave your answer in the comment section and I'll tell you if you're correct. Don't forget to also subscribe to this channel, all right? If you're yet to subscribe, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell icon. Select all so that you get notified whenever we upload a new content. And then finally, share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in our next class.